Good morning. And on behalf of St. Andrews or St. John's United Church, I would like to welcome all of you here this morning. Also, a warm welcome to those who are watching from the comfort of your home. The announcements from the bulletin are as follows. Services from September the 3rd onward will resume at St. John's United Church at 10 a.m. We are very grateful to St. Paul's Presbyterian Church for hosting our church services these past few months while our foundation was being repaired. Our thoughts and prayers are with David Esty and family on the death of David's brother, Bill. May God bless those who mourn. Reverend Linda had surgery in late July after more cancer was discovered in her neck. She will be on medical leave for an undetermined period while she undergoes chemotherapy and immunotherapy treatments. Please continue to hold Reverend Linda in your prayers while she is on her journey back to health. And please join the book club on October the 10th for a lively discussion with special guest Barbara Fradkin. Barbara is a winner of several writing awards and will be discussing The Whisperer of Legends from her Inspector Green series. The meeting starts at 7 p.m. in the lounge at St. John's United Church and all are welcome. And there is a special invitation to St. Paul's members. To show our appreciation for their hospitality over the last few months, the Congregation of St. Paul's is invited to lunch and fellowship in our dining hall following their worship service on the 17th. After members of St. Paul's have signed up, there will be spots for St. John's members as well. Please sign up on the, she on the sheet in your own church hall and the spaces, will be, the spaces will be filled on first come, first serve after we have the numbers from St. Paul's. And the sign-up date for St. Paul's is September the 10th. Please join us for fellowship after church in St. John's United Church Hall. All are welcome. There is a sign-up sheet for coffee and tea makers and goodies for each Sunday. Please sign up and help with our fellowship after church. And as we gather today, I ask you to take a moment to recognize the space you are in. And even more than that, to recognize the land upon which that space sits. For thousands of years, First Nations people have walked on this land. Their relationship with the land is at the center of their lives and spirituality. Let us acknowledge their stewardship of this land throughout the ages and give thanks for the indigenous people's care for this land, past and present, and the fact that we are able to meet on this land. And so in the name of Jesus Christ, who calls us to be the church and to celebrate God's presence, let us worship. Would you please join with me in the call to worship? Sing a new song to the Lord. Praise God in the assembly of the faithful people. Praise God in the temple. Praise God's strength in heaven. Praise God with trumpets. Praise God with harps and lyres. Let's join together and sing, Praise the Lord with the sound of trumpet. Praise the Lord in the field and forest. Praise the Lord in the seas. 
wonderful. Please join with me in the opening prayer. God of music and song, we come before you with a new song that has not yet been sung. We come before you with familiar tunes, hymns and songs that have been sung many times. Music we take for granted because of the confidence with which we sing it. Help us to sing the new and the old with a discerning heart, a humble voice, and a wanting soul. Let the earth ring with your music, your joy, and overflow with your love. We ask this through your Son, the one Lord of the dance, that we will help keep the music alive now and always. Amen. Come to my heart, Lord Jesus. Good morning. At different times in our lives, we have filled a bucket with water, maybe stood and watched sap dip slowly into a bucket as we dreamed of the first taste of spring, that sweet maple syrup. Maybe we've played with a child filling a bucket with sand and emptying it and filling it over and over. Or maybe looked for a tool hanging from a carpenter's bucket. But have you ever filled an invisible bucket? How would that be possible to fill something that was invisible? In the children's book, Have You Filled a Bucket Today by Carol McLeod and illustrated by David Messing, the author says that everyone has an invisible bucket. She says that everyone's bucket has one purpose only. Its purpose is to hold our good thoughts and good feelings about ourselves. Our invisible bucket represents our mental and emotional health. We feel happy when our bucket is full, and we feel sad, hurt, or lonely when our bucket is empty. Other people feel the same way too. How do we fill invisible buckets? We need others to fill our buckets, and other people need us to fill their buckets. Our buckets are filled over and over each day by the people that we meet or interact with. In her book, Carol McLeod describes a bucket filler 
as someone who is a loving, caring person who makes others feel very special. It would be absolutely wonderful if our bucket was always being filled on a regular basis. But sometimes life circumstances empty our bucket and we may feel sad or lonely. Or someone might dip into our bucket and take some of our good feelings. The author refers to them as being bucket dippers. A bucket dipper might say something to hurt or do mean things that would make someone feel sad. She says that many bucket dippers have an empty bucket and they think that by dipping into someone else's bucket, it will help, but it doesn't. However, filling someone's bucket will fill our buckets too because we feel good when we help others. Every day as we go about our day, we are either filling or dipping into each other's buckets by what we say and do. As our youth prepare to return to school in September, and as we as a congregation interact with each other, may we choose to always be bucket fillers, not bucket dippers. So how can we be bucket fillers? There are many ways that we can fill a bucket. This week, let us try to be bucket fillers by writing someone a thank you note or saying thank you. <clears throat> by calling someone on the telephone or sending them a text message to let them know that you care. By asking a friend to join with you in an activity or invite, invite someone over for a visit. By paying someone a compliment. Brighten someone's day with a smile. A smile can make all the difference in the world. Three weeks ago, when I was grocery shopping, I was busy looking for items on the list, and as I rounded the corner in the store, there was an employee filling shelves. He turned and flashed this great big smile. That smile was a simple way to brighten my day. It made a difference in my shopping experience as well. Greeting someone with a hi or a hello and using their name makes them feel part of a group and it also has a positive activity effect on their day. Filling someone's bucket doesn't cost money. Filling someone's bucket doesn't take much time. But when you are a bucket filler, you make the world around a better place to be. This week, let's all of us aim to fill someone's bucket each and every day, which will in turn fill our bucket as well and spread God's love throughout the world. Happy bucket filling.
morning. Reading from Romans, chapter 12, verses 1 to 8. And it's titled, To to New Life in Christ. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function, so we who are many are one body in Christ, and individually we are members one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. The word of our Lord. Should I feel discouraged? 
I've had my bucket filled quite a few times this morning. I might just as well go home. <laughs> Thank you, Larry and the choir, and Heather and Lorna. I can't begin to tell you how wonderful it is to be standing up here and listening to this large group of people singing together. Other than the national anthem at sporting events, people rarely sing in public anymore. In our society, we usually leave the singing up to the professionals or in the shower. But in church, we sing. And when we read the scriptures, it seems that God's people have always been singing. Moses and the people of Israel sang to God after their escape from slavery. Miriam played a tambourine and danced with the women and sang of God's triumph at the Red Sea. We've been singing our faith for a very long time. How can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land, lamented the Hebrew people? The Lord's my shepherd, I shall not want, sang a young shepherd boy on the hills of Palestine. A hymn from the early church proclaimed that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bend and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. God's people have always been singing. We sing to remember the wonderful works of God, to give thanks for God's faithfulness, and to find our place in the story of God's love for the world. The Psalms were Israel's songbook full of their cries and lament, joy and thanksgiving, full of their doubt and confidence, their fear and faith. God's people have always been singing, and according to the psalmist, we sing to join our praises with those of creation. We sing because God brings justice and righteousness to the world. We sing because God is present everywhere, and we belong to God. God's people have always been singing. In the church, we sing what is deepest in our hearts, about God's creation and God's grace, about Jesus, who is our friend and our Savior, about the Holy Spirit, who encourages us and blows us out into the world. As we sing, we learn our theology, what we think and believe about God and one another. We may have forgotten what we learned in Sunday school, but we didn't forget the words to those hymns, Jesus loves me, this I know. Jesus wants me for a sunbeam. Can a little child like me? Jesus bids us shine. We sang them, and somehow, with the singing, our faith was strengthened. Through singing, we learn and grow in faith and are formed into thinking, passionate, loving, courageous disciples of Jesus. Through singing, we praise God in our worship, sometimes allowing our hallelujahs to get right into our bodies. I saw you in the first hymn, clapping and swaying and even dancing with joy and gratitude. Through singing, we lift up our prayers in worship, melodies that arise from our deepest feelings, words that express our longing and loss and our need to belong. When black slaves made their way to Canada through the Underground Railroad, they sang spirituals to bolster their courage and to pass messages to one another. Through singing, we protest the way things are in the world, witnessing to God's truth, <laughs> announcing our conviction that we shall overcome, and committing ourselves to God's way of justice and peace. In 1994, when Archbishop Desmond Tutu voted in his very first South African election, he didn't just sing, he danced. And today, 
whether it's poking fun at an arrogant political leader or protesting against injustice, we are still singing. God's people have always been singing, and in every generation, there is a need to sing to God a new song. Songs in our own language, songs with images that speak to us, songs that reflect present day understandings of our faith, songs that connect us to our brothers and sisters around the world. But the words are only part of the musical work. There is the melody. Unison singing can be beautiful, but it is difficult to achieve perfect tuning of all voices, and it is limited in some ways. The sound is richer, fuller, and more beautiful as each voice sings its own part. While all the parts of a choir sing in balance, and though there are many voices, alto, bass, tenor, and soprano, each offering their own sound, it creates a glorious anthem of praise. We are so grateful for Larry, our choir director, and the members of our choir who provide beautiful music each Sunday. Thank you, Larry, and thank you, choir. We are like a choir as we each sing our own song, our own melody. In the scripture from Romans that Heather read to us this morning, it reminds us that our backgrounds, personalities, experiences, and abilities are all different. We are unique, individual, and special. But we all have a voice, each has a song, each has a gift. Together we can make up a beautiful harmony in God's world. When these gifts, these songs, these lives work together, the world hears our soul music. God's song is sung throughout the world, through our lives and our actions, as each finds a way to sing the song and tell the story. St. John's United Church and St. Paul's Presbyterian Church have been singing of their faith for a very long time, for more than 150 years to be exact. Many of you are singing your song in a variety of ways as you reach out to local families in distress, contribute to missions, donate to the House of Lazarus, give to the food bank, and support Rideau Hill Camp. Over the years, you sang God's song by inviting the community into your churches for bazaars, anniversary dinners, and friendship lunches, spaghetti suppers, fish fries, yard sales, and bake sales. These are some examples of singing God's song of love to humankind. All are part of being the body of Christ, and all are part of the choir. Some, are, some of you are busy with tasks of administration. Others are teaching, some are preaching, and many are praying. Some are driving patients to hospitals, others are volunteering at the local outreach mission or the local hospital. Some donate to the children's Christmas angel tree or the children's snowsuit fund, and others are raising money for someone with a serious health problem. Recently, I read that singing the Lord's song is not confined to making music. The article said that we sing the Lord's song any time we bear witness to Christ's life, his ministry, his death, and his resurrection in a spirit of joyful celebration. We sing the Lord's song when we remember that God's loving and forgiving spirit is with us whatever circumstances we may encounter. We sing the Lord's song when we acknowledge with gratitude God's mighty acts of creation. In preparation for today, I came across a beautiful piece of music in Voices United called, He Came Singing Love. And the words are, He came singing love, 
and he lived singing love, and he died singing love. He came singing faith, and he lived singing faith, and he died singing faith. He came singing hope, and he lived singing hope, and he died singing hope. He came singing peace, and he lived singing peace, and he died singing peace. For the love, the faith, the hope, and the peace to, to go on, we must make it our song. You and I must be the singers. Amen. Shall we join together and sing, How Great Thou Art? I think it's one of the most favorite hymns out there.
will we join together and, and read the affirmation of faith together as printed. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works at us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Jesus said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. We will now receive the offering. Please join with me in the prayer of dedication. Giver of gifts, may we respond to your giving with an overflowing of all that we have and are. May we give freely of the hours in our day, the bread on our table, and the songs in our hearts. Generous God, we give you our heartfelt thanks for all that you have given us for all to whom you have called us to serve, and for all you have to share with others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The pastoral prayer that I would like to share with you this morning was written by Joyce Rupp, and it is entitled, To God Who Sings Through Us. Let us pray. God who sings through us, we thank you for the talents and the abundance of gifts that are ours, for the faith that stirs and grows in our hearts, for the many people you have been instruments of goodness in our lives, for the moments when we have known the song of your presence in a special way. And for the times when your goodness has made music through us, God who sings through us, we thank you. God of goodness, help us to trust in you when fear rises up in us and we do not believe in our ability to be your instrument, when busyness and schedules of our lives press upon us and create questions about your song within us. When we doubt your presence in the difficult aspects of our days, when we lose sight of the truth that we are called to be instruments of goodness, and when emptiness, loneliness, and other struggles keep us from hearing your melody of love. God of goodness, help us to trust in you. God of love, sing your song through us as we grow in believing in our goodness, as we allow more and more of who we are to be influenced by your presence, as the song of your love grows in us and the call to be your instrument becomes clearer to us, as we struggle to know how and when to share our gifts and goodness with others. And as we go forth from here, with the desire to be your instruments of love. God of love, sing your song through us. Open us to your music and life and place a song in our, heart, in our hearts. We pray in the name of, the, of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Our closing hymn is, We Shall Go Out With Hope of Resurrection. And now go with a song in our hearts, our faith strengthened, and our community stronger for our presence in it. Let us be God's people in all the places life calls us to be. May the music of our lives bring God praise and glory this day and forevermore. And remember to fill somebody's bucket. And please join us for fellowship across the, across the road. Thank you.